we have already discussed the features of femur now we will discuss the attachments on the femur this is the head of femur and you can see the green mark which i have made in the fovea this is the attachment of the ligament of head of femur which is also called ligamentum teres now coming to the anterior aspect of the neck you can see here this green line is the attachment of the capsule of the hip joint the capsule of the hip joint anteriorly reaches up to the intertrochanteric line and as we go up this capsule starts to go towards the medial side and on the medial aspect on the posterior aspect of neck this capsule reaches a little more than half of the neck of femur just behind the attachment of the capsule of hip joint you can see these two green marks these are the marks of the attachment of iliofemoral ligament and behind the attachment of iliofemoral ligament you can see the attachments of the red attachments this is the attachment of vastus lateralis and rest of the attachment will be discussed later this attachment on the quadrate tubercle is the attachment of the quadratus femoris and below the quadratus femoris on the intertrochanteric line is the attachment of vastus medialis which extends backwards and it will be shown later now on the anterior aspect of the greater trochanter this blue mark you can see this is the attachment of the gluteus minimus as we come on the lateral aspect of the greater trochanter this oblique line gives attachment to the gluteus medius now coming to the medial aspect of the greater trochanter you can see at the apex of the greater trochanter this is the attachment of piriformis muscle inside the trochanteric fossa this blue mark shows the attachment of obturator externus muscle and above the obturator externus muscle there is a muscular impression which shows three attachments this attachment is the attachment of gemellus superior and this one is the attachment of gemellus inferior and between the two attachments is the attachment of the tendon of obturator internus now this large attachment on the anterior surface of femur which extends from the anterior surface and comes to the lateral surface reaching up to the linea aspera the lateral lip of linea aspera this is the attachment of the vastus intermedius muscle now coming to the lesser trochanter and extending a little below the lesser trochanter is the attachment of the iliacus and sos major muscle so this combined tendon of the iliosos gets attached to the lesser trochanter and it extends a little below the level of the lesser trochanter now starting from the upper part of the intertrochanteric line this is the attachment of the vastus lateralis muscle this muscle starts from the upper part of intertrochanteric line then it goes down on the anterior and inferior margins of the greater trochanter and extending behind it reaches the lateral lip of gluteal tuberosity this structure is the gluteal tuberosity on which is the attachment of gluteus maximus muscle so this vastus lateralis crosses the lateral lip of gluteal tuberosity and then it comes down and gets attached to the lateral lip of linea aspera and reaches up to the middle of the shaft of femur so this is the attachment of vastus lateralis now on the lower part of the intertrochanteric line just behind the attachment of iliofemoral ligament is the attachment of vastus medialis muscle this muscle moves towards the medial side and as it comes to the posterior aspect of the femur it crosses the spiral line of femur so this is the spiral line of femur then it comes down and reaches the medial lip of the linea aspera and it moves down it has a large attachment and reaches the medial supracondylar line and it ends on the about upper one third of the medial supracondylar line so this is the attachment of vastus medialis muscle now all three vastae which we just discussed the vastus medialis the vastus intermedius and the vastus lateralis are the muscles of the anterior compartment of the thigh after the anterior compartment as we move from the lateral to the medial side you can see there is an intermuscular septum which separates the anterior compartment from the posterior compartment 
So from the medial lip of gluteal tuberosity, you can see this green line. This is the lateral intermuscular septum and it moves down on the linea aspera just medial to the attachment of the vastus lateralis. This intermuscular septum moves down and reaches the upper part of the supracondylar line. After the attachment of the lateral intermuscular septum, you can see this blue line. This is the attachment of the short head of biceps femoris, which gets attached to the lateral lip of linea aspera. So it moves from a little above the half of the bone and it comes down on the lateral lip of linea aspera, ending just above the lateral supracondylar line. This is the only muscle of the posterior compartment which gets, it, gets its attachment on the linea aspera. The rest of the muscles, the semimembranosis, the semitendinosis, and the long head of biceps, they arise from the hip bone. Now, after the attachment of the short head of bicep femoris, as we come medially, you can see another green line. This is the attachment of posterior intermuscular septum. So the posterior compartment of the thigh is enclosed between the lateral and the posterior intermuscular septa. So this is the lateral intermuscular septum and this here is the medial intermuscular septum and you can see the only muscle which gets attached, only muscle of the posterior compartment of the thigh which gets attached to the linea aspera of the femur is the short head of bicep femoris which you can see between these between the attachments of two intermuscular septa this blue line now this red line as we have already told you this is the attachment of the vastus medialis muscle which is the muscle of anterior compartment after the attachment of this muscle comes another green line which shows the attachment of the medial intermuscular septum so this green line which starts from the spiral line and moves down to reach the upper part of the lateral of the medial supracondylar line this shows the attachment of the medial intermuscular septum so between the attachment of the medial intermuscular septum and the posterior intermuscular septum are these muscles which are the muscles of the medial compartment this muscle which starts immediately after immediately lateral to the attachment of the medial supracondylar line is the attachment of the adductor longus muscle so it moves down on the medial lip of linea aspera after that comes the attachment of the adductor brevis muscle this adductor brevis is shown with a blue line and it is a short muscle it reaches on the upper part of the medial lip of linea aspera and ends there now this blue line which starts from the medial lip of the gluteal tuberosity is the attachment of adductor magnus. After passing from the medial lip of gluteal tuberosity, it comes to attach to the medial lip of the linea aspera. It is a large muscle and it gets it, it starts its attachment from the medial lip of the gluteal tuberosity. Then it runs down on the medial lip of the linea aspera all the way down to the medial supracondylar line and reaching up to the adductor tubercle which is a part of the medial condyle of femur. So you can see that all the three adductors which are the muscles of the medial compartment lie between the medial and the posterior intermuscular septa. This attachment which shown with the black line is the attachment of pectineus. Now coming to the lower end of the femur you can see that this side is the lateral side so this is the lateral condyle of the femur and this is the medial condyle of femur so on the lateral supracondylar line this small attachment is the attachment of the plantaris muscle after the plantaris comes the attachment of the gastrocnemius this is the lateral lip of gastrocnemius which starts from the lower end of the supracondylar line and reaches a muscular impression on the lateral epicondyle of the lateral condyle of femur. Below this is the attachment of the fibular collateral ligament which gets attached to the lateral epicondyle of the femur. Below the lateral epicondyle is the popliteal groove which gives attachment to the popliteus muscle. 
on the medial condyle is the elevation which is called the medial epicondyle and it gives attachment to the tibial collateral ligament now coming to the intercondylar notch you can see two green marks here this anterior mark is the attachment of posterior cruciate ligament posterior cruciate ligament is attached on the anterior part of the lateral surface of the medial condyle of femur this is the medial condyle of femur this is the lateral surface of medial condyle and the posterior cruciate ligament gets attached to the anterior part of the lateral surface of medial condyle of femur this here is the attachment of anterior cruciate ligament anterior cruciate ligament gets attached to the posterior part of the medial surface of lateral condyle of femur this is the lateral condyle of femur this surface is the medial surface of the lateral condyle and this posterior anterior cruciate ligament gets attached to the posterior part of the medial surface of lateral condyle of femur now this green line is the attachment of the capsule of the knee joint it only gets attached to the articular surface to the margins of the articular surfaces of the lower end of femur so it moves from here it goes up to the inter condylar line and as we come to the medial side you can see it leaves the epicondyle outside so epicondyle is outside the capsule of the knee joint then it moves anteriorly passes over the attach over the uh, over the articular surfaces and then it moves laterally to pass beneath the lateral epicondyle of femur now you can see the tendon of the popliteus muscle it is intracapsular so it will be found inside the capsule of the knee joint